Let us make man in our own image. I said, Let us make man in our own image. Why? We made stuff yesterday. And the day before that. And the day before that. Is rocket science objective? You might be tempted to tell me that this is a dumb question and to say that yes, it obviously is. Being based on mathematically verifiable facts that produce repeatable results, rocket science seems as objective as a field of study can be, at least to us uneducated laypeople. But can a whole field of study really be called objective? Is this even a coherent way to use the word? I guess I can't say for sure that such a use of the word doesn't work. As I've said before, Trying to make such conclusive, definitive statements about a word like objective will always be tricky. But I want to suggest that applying the word to a broad field, even one as mechanical and fact-based as rocket science, is reductive to the point that it becomes problematic. When people talk about something being objective, they're usually referring to a fact that can be confirmed through observation. Basically, anything that is reliably observed independent of opinion or personal perspective. 1 plus 1 equals 2 is an objective fact, or at least it represents an objective fact in terms we all agree to. There is a plastic frog taped to Lego legs sitting on my desk is also an objective fact. Facts like these are limited in scope, and they can be demonstrated without reasonable question to any fellow observer. So in light of this, let's bring things back to rocket science. Is it objective? Well, it sure seems like it because scientists can discover a lot of objective truths about things like which shapes of projectiles are most aerodynamic and which combinations of fuel provide the most thrust, and about how to best set a rocket on a desired trajectory. It appears that, while complicated, many of these truths are objective, and the observations arrived at by one rocket scientist can be repeatedly verified by other rocket scientists. And in fact, if they couldn't, the whole field would be pretty useless. But we're still faced with a couple complications. First, all I've really demonstrated is that rocket science encompasses several points of fact that can be called objective, and progressing from that observation to calling the field itself objective moves us into new and linguistically trickier territory. Second, if a person wanted to be obtuse about it, he or she could still point out that all the facts I just described, objective as they are, only serve to help people fulfill their subjective preference for using rockets to safely deliver payloads instead of blowing them up on the launch pad or randomly crashing them. So then what do we do with all this? Do we call rocket science objective because it is built on so many objective facts? Or do we call it subjective since all these facts are employed to achieve a goal determined by mere preference? I would say there's a third option, which is that we can quit trying to stretch words like objective and subjective over broad spans of territory that involve complicated mixes of fact, theory, and opinion. And for those of you who didn't see where I was taking this from a mile away, the same can be said for morality. Like rocket science, the meaningful study of morality will uncover many objective, verifiable truths about the consequences of various actions, and we can use our understanding of these consequences to make rules that will both help us form a cohesive society and promote the safety and well-being of as many people as possible. This can be done. But the problem is that just like some dumb ass could ask, why is flying rockets better than crashing them? Another dumb ass could ask the equally worthless question, why are social cohesion and human well-being better than anarchy and suffering? I would answer either group of people by saying, I can't give you philosophical proof that either is better, but quit asking immature questions like a dumb ass. A verifiable fact is objective. A preference is subjective. Fields of study can have objective facts, but any endeavor, even one supported by such facts, is going to be undertaken for reasons that are based on subjective preference, and that's perfectly okay. It's tricky, if not impossible, to sum up entire fields with a word that's best used to describe individual facts. That's why I don't argue over the word objective.